so tired of flat tires. GC Rad One here, Yamaha T Dub Club, and today, today's going to be a little tech experiment. Don't know how it's going to go, but I'm going to try it. But let's talk about the real issue here. Tired of flat tires, yes. I have had my fair share. I've had a couple of front flat tires, but I have seemed to be plagued with rear flat tires, and I'm using the heavy duty tubes, and these things are expensive. And I use the sealant fillers, and I just somehow seem to be plagued with flat rear tires. And if you know, changing a rear tire on the T-Dub in the field is a bit of an ordeal. So I've been looking at a lot of uh, other adventure bike guys with the bigger bikes and they have gone tubeless. So I am going to attempt to go tubeless with the stock Bridgestone TW34 tire. I'm looking at them down here. I have two tires, I have two tubes. This is my stock rim. I have another rim that I bought from another guy on the back of my bike, which has a third tube and a third tire. And it went flat on me on that last ride with Justin and George. But the crazy thing is with that, it's so unreliable. I, I had a flat in the field with them. We were close enough to the truck to get back there. We drive the vehicles back, got dropped off at George's house. I'm like, all right, I just got to ride around the corner. So we put air in the tire and it sat for months all the way up until the time Joanne and I rode the T-Dub up to Pikes Peak for the International Hill Climb. We get up there, did just fine, got ready to leave, flat tire aired it up i went over to one of the racer pits and borrowed some air rode it home and it sits here perfectly fine but the wife was like do you want to go ride today and i'm like i do but i'm really nervous that i'm going to get a flat and if i'm out there by myself then that's going to be a long day because i got to call these guys help come pick up this and all that because you know changing a tube I don't have all the tools that I should have to change a tube in the field by myself, but at the same time, I don't even want to go that route. I'm done with tubes. <laughs> done with tubes. So I'm going to go tubeless. Well, how do you go tubeless on a stock TW200 wheel? Off the research I've been doing, the big dual sport guys are using these items. What I have here is 3M Marine Adhesive Sealant. Fast Cure 5200. I'll link all this stuff. And then the 3M Extreme Sealing Tape 4411N. And what we're going to do is, in order to go tubeless, you have to make it to where air is not going to escape out of the wheel. And the other thing I have is the k l 325413 tubeless wheel valve stem, which this will actually lock. I'll, I'll replace the valve stem with this. I will seal up all the spokes with the goop. And as a secondary measure, the guys are using this tape to go all the way around that. And from there, I should be able to go tubeless. So the trick question from there is, is how do I, and sorry, I'm looking at my shelf because I have a tubeless tire kit that I carry in my Land Cruiser. So I'm going to do a small version of a tubeless plug kit because when you're four wheeling, you plug a tire and you air it up and go from there with tire plugs and tire plugs usually work. I mean, done a lot of wheeling, used a lot of tire plugs. So that's going to be my approach to the T-Dub going forward. Will it work? I don't know. Will it hold air? I don't know. Will it be serviceable in the field? I do not know. So we will find out. But the one cool thing is, is I still have my tire with the screw that went through it. And this tire is not dead yet. It's probably got a 500 miles left, maybe 200 miles left. But for the sake of the experiment, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount this tire up, pull the screw out in it, 
put a tire plug in it and see if it works from there because if I can make this system work then I have a new way of servicing tires and then maybe from there I'll go to the front tire and do the same as well because I'm more nervous you know the front tire you get more flats there from pinch flats from having it aired down too low but you're trying to make traction and add a little bit more suspension uh, so yeah here goes the experiment we'll see what happens the first part we're going to start with is using the sealant to seal up all of the spoke nipples I guess that's how we're going to get this thing started oh so with that check this piece out Yes, this is a OG Strider concealed carry deep pocket clip frame lock and uh, some of you guys may be knife junkies some of you may not be knife junkies but this knife here has been on my want list forever and if you know the history on Strider then you know why but what makes this knife special is this belong to a friend of mine, new friend of mine, I'd like to introduce my man Richie of Boston, aka Jailbreak Overland. I work at Redline Land Cruisers and he's traveling across the country, needed a shop to work out of for a few days. He and I got to chatting. I spotted his strider in his pocket and I'm like, oh, let me see that piece. And uh, he brings that guy out, shows me another one, and then. Uh, he gifted me with this one here and I man like if you understand and you know you know what the deal is so I'm like super gracious um, for my man Richie gifting me with this because yeah yeah this is a this is a dope piece right here and so this will be my new daily carry uh, new glorified uh, you know opening apparatus you know, I would, you know, I've never afforded myself something of this uh, level. Uh, so, because this knife has been heavily used, it belonged to my man Richie. I'm going to use it as my new daily, and it's going to get a lot of box opening at uh, Redline Land Cruisers. <laughs> uh, pretty funny. So, nevertheless, let's get into this sealing up all these nipples alrighty so I was looking for the uh, the super stabber in the cap you know 3m they usually have like a you know it's like a thing that'll open it up because it's sealed let's see if the uh, starter will take care of that oh yeah perfect great use of a strider knife and what I've done here is uh, I have my table here and I put these two blocks on here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin the wheel and seal all these guys up. Here's my tube outlet right here. And it looks like I'm going to have to uh, cut that off as well. And let's see how this first one goes. Let's see if I can get enough juice flowing. Oh, yeah. So really all I should be able to have to do is just seal up the uh, space between the nipples. And you know me, I may come back and put a second layer on here. and I'll go this way so you can see what I got going on. But yeah, I'm just going to uh, seal the space around the nipples. Keep air from escaping. Escape? No, escape. My hands are going to be toast after this because maybe I should have poked a bigger hole. Maybe I'll take a nail and open that up a little bit. But it's allowing me to do a little bit better detail work with just gobbing it up. And note that I'm not uh, going inside the 
spoke nipple I don't think you need yeah and that's probably one of my other concerns is you know when I was working at Gusta Motorsports we were we were race prepping the bikes every week and part of the race prep is to check the spoke nipple tension and technically I should uh, be doing that job before I do this this wheel has been race prep once before but I don't have the the fancy torque wrench that we had at work and so that's on my to-do list it's roughly 150 bucks or so but yeah like I'm just not flowing in money to afford myself that but I want to ride so I'm making this stuff happen here this way if this wheel gets bent out of truth then yeah we got we got bigger issues but having tight spokes it's a good thing yeah I know sacrificing one thing for the experiment of another but that'll be the other big thing is can I tighten my spokes with this stuff here and then will it be soft enough that it'll allow me to turn will I have to come back and reseal it I don't know It'll be a bit of a work, but maybe what'll happen is it'll get a race prep every time I change a rear tire. I think I've, I've most I've gotten out of the rear tire. I think is what five thousand miles, four thousand miles, three thousand miles. I can't remember. I'd have to go back and look and see. But for today, this is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna cut the film here. There's no sense of you watching me do. 36 of these. All right, I've completed my uh, holes, but also too, I'll, I'll show you what I'm doing here, is I, I, this is my first application here, and some of them you can see little, kind of like little holes in there. So yes, I should have a pair of the surgical gloves. I have tons of them at the shop, but I don't have any of them here. But I'm just going around here and smoothing it out. And if I see a little crevice that looks like, okay, that could uh, release air or whatever, I'm just smoothing them out. So this is just, I don't know, my little detail nature freak. I just want to smooth it out. And I don't know if you can see that, but if I see a little, what looks like it could be a pinhole or something, I'm just adding some more in there I mean I guess you could just glob it all up and go right to it but yeah so you can see like that looks like a hole in there so I'm just just don't want to see any additional passages for air I don't remember which video it was but it was some guys talking about some bmws they were doing this to the big gs bmw wheels and you know it has those spokes that are going through both sides of the wheel and uh i saw a couple of ktm uh, 990 or 1190 adventure guys uh doing the same process so you know i watched like 10 different videos and you know that's the rule right you got to watch 10 and come up with one conclusion because there's 10 different opinions and you know my opinion is the same it's like it's just my opinion i'm not recommending you do this i'm just doing this as a personal experiment if it works this is what i'll be running at the t-dub fest coming up what is it it's july now in september two months at the mob street 83 t-dub fest looking forward to putting my bike in the dirt in utah i've yet to ride utah on the t-dub my first time riding utah was on my xr 400 in moab i want to say that was back in uh 2007 I was there for HPI at the RC crawler world finals I miss those guys I was I'm sure the forum's still around but that's an awesome forum if you're into RC crawling I made a lot of friends through there but yeah that was cool Austin Dunn dude from Alabama actually came out and won that event <laughs> Everyone's kind of blown away. How some kid come from Alabama and win crawling? There's no, there's no hills to crawl in Alabama. Well, there's nothing over 3,000 foot, but up north where Austin's from, there's some good crawling up there. Yeah, that was pretty fun. I was super stoked because you know I'm originally from Alabama to go. So you can see here, I wiped that one 
already and you can see a little bit of a you can see a little hole at the bottom there so yeah I'm gonna patch that in a little bit more make sure we get a, a solid go round on there all right so that should be it next step will be the second layer of adding the tape okay here's something that uh, I made a little mistake on I made the mistake of thinking that these were the cap style spoke nipples where you tighten them from the inside but these spokes do go all the way through so I am going to have to seal up these holes because then the air could potentially leak out the threads my job here is not finished. I've pretty much gone through all of the nipples on the outer edge, but now I get to uh, fill them all in. Fill them all in. Fill in that cap. Either way, it is what it is, right? I'm just gonna make nice little uh, plug holes. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Kind of a good thing that I'm not in a rush here. I was kind of thinking this thing through and like, wait a second, we can get these guys filled in. The stuff is drying pretty quick. This on the outside, it's rubbery, tacky, but I'm gonna look at the instructions and see what the 100% cure time is. I said I'm not in a rush to make this happen. Ain't like I'm trying to go ride today. If I wanna ride today, I can ride the tire that's on my bike already, of which, has me a little nervous because I could ride I and mean, it could leak down. Yeah, man. I'm excited about this. Hope it works. Hope it works. I mean, other guys have done it and are doing it. I guess the biggest thing is, is we're doing this in an effort to become more self-sufficient on the trail. I want to be able to patch the tire like a four-wheel drive on trail and carry on. The that and carry the and that the and carry the mission. Okay, now we have our spoke nipples entirely covered with the 3M marine adhesive. I am now going to apply the 3M 4411N extreme sealing tape. And Technically, I don't know why the guys are doing this. Well, technically I do know. They're, uh, they're taking an extra precautionary measure. Ooh, this stuff is thick. All right, I don't know if you can... This stuff is wild. I could use this for handlebar grid tape on my bicycle almost. Anyhow, I'm gonna wrap this wheel and I'm going to start opposite of my valve stem hole because my valve stem hole is going to get poked and we'll add the aluminum valve stem the bolt-in type in there next but for now we're going to do as those before me and do this tape inside the wheel and man this stuff is like like some kind of thick stuff i've never seen before but this may have some other applications for me and like i said these guys are just uh adding this as a secondary layer Take my scissors. Wow, this stuff is thick. Don't stick to my scissors. Yeah, it's trying to stick to my scissors. This stuff is on some whole other level of extra goo goo. But pretty much see why they're they're just using I guess this is like the rim tape but a tubeless tire doesn't need rim tape the rim tape is for the spoke nipples chafing up against the uh, inner tube but guess what hopefully this will be the last effort of ever using tubes again I'm just going over and just pushing this stuff down all around the edges and I already know right now I think what I'm going to do is come with my white sealant and just run a bead across this outer edge 
Um, you know, again, just for extra sealing purposes. And we'll see what we come up with. All right, let me get this all sealed down and then uh, we'll go on to step 48 of 950 and making your T-dub tubeless. I'm excited. I was telling George today at work, like, yo, uh, you ready to try that wheel machine? It's not a machine. It's just a wheel tool. He bought the Harbor Freight motorcycle tire changing apparatus. Um, I have one that I want. I was watching the six day trials guys and it's, I don't know, it's like uh, I caramba or <laughs> I caramba, eh, something like that. But it's a, it's a pretty much $500, $600 device for changing tires. And I need to ask the company if it'll actually do. This is a 14 inch wheel. So I need to ask them if it'll do a 14 inch wheel. Okay, I'm gonna pause, do the other side, and then I'll come back and show you putting the juicy juice back on for extra double seal. Okay, I've added my tape. I'll show you my little crossover action. And uh, this stuff has some really gooey extra grip capabilities. And you can see, like, yeah, I got some little channels coming up over here. And that's why I'm going to come across and seal both of those edges in there. And basically just give it extra insurance of sealing up against the body of the wheel there. This stuff is pretty wild. This could be like rock chip protection. I don't know what it's technically used for, but I need to look into that. But this stuff has some really cool uses and abilities. It is not normal. It is very smushy, soft, but with a hard edge. And uh, yeah, so you can see I got that going. So yeah, let's just, uh, let's give this a whirl and see what's gonna happen. Not too worried about putting it down right now because I'm going to come back and you know apply the finger smear method and yeah maybe I'm just being a little overkill but when you've had flats like I've had I'm looking to overkill it yeah man this is gonna work out quite nice I think all right let's just jump right into it here goes lefty trying to do a right hand job you get the idea you see what I'm doing and just this whole intersection right here of the two tapes and the overlap I'm just laying down a little extra extra George is gonna see this and he's gonna go what in the monstrosity on earth are you doing going to bliss all right I think, you know, about a hundred more coats and I'll have it done. Just kidding. Okay. All right. Now that I've made my mess, we'll let that cure. So, yeah, this has been a, what, two day process for me. <laughs> but it is what it is. All right, fellow T-dubbers, we are in the final stage here. I'm going to put the threaded valve core in, but I gotta like put a hole through my material here. I'm gonna use my, I am a huge fan of the Exacto brand. I've been using these since high school um, all through my graphic design career and all through my life of creative use it in all kind of applications so I'm just gonna poke a hole in here with it and man this stuff is really 
I'm, I'm amazed at the sticky, sticky ability of this tape. Okay. So that should be that. I guess we'll go with the flat side in. All right, just gonna chuck the nut. Hopefully you can see that from there. All right, we're in the closing steps here. 12 millimeter nut. I think that's probably about as good as it's going to get. All right. Tomorrow night it's off to George's house. And we're going to see if we can get this thing to seal up. All right. Stay tuned. The saga of going tubeless on the T-Dub. Over at George's house going to use his wheel stand and we discover that the 14 inch TW200 wheel is not quite large enough to fit over the top ring of the wheel stand. It's a half inch or so not large enough but it's sitting on top of it and we think we can make it work and we're a little desperate to make this happen but the other dilemma is that the hub of the TW wheel is actually much larger than most other motorcycle wheels and the through bolt doesn't come all the way up through the wheel but like I said we're desperate we're gonna go for it we're gonna try to make it work regardless so we'll see what happens here right now as you can see it's just sitting on top of the wheel stand not going over typically your spokes will come out and rest on top of the stand and true MX Deluxe Ghetto Fashion. We get out the dish soap and we're going to wipe down the beads to make it slippery when we try to put the wheel, the tire over the wheel. It makes it easier to slide on there. We can also use Maxima SC1, but neither of us have the super juice uh, in our shops right now. But here my man George is uh, manhandling the Bridgestone TW34 onto the TW rim. You know, we're used to working up on the bench and stuff, but uh, I think we're gonna have to get this whole operation down into the floor, like this. And <laughs> I'm gonna come in and give him a, a hand in the assistance of trying to get the bead seated on there and get the tire irons around and make this whole operation happen. It's usually a one-man job and it could be a one-man job but for the sake of the whole situation we're just trying to make it work. And this is my first time using this type of machine so I'm a little bit wrestling with it and uh, George knows what he's doing. I'm used to using a, a wheel machine that we had at Gusta Motorsports or I'm just used to using just tire irons without the aid of this device that will actually hold the bead and compress the bead down. So it's a little bit of a, an awkward situation but we're making it work and we make it happen just gonna get some straps on this thing so we can actually get the bead to set and <laughs> we don't have a compressor we have a bicycle pump and yeah we're gonna try to get this thing going George goes a whack at it I give it a whack and we're just kind of desperate to get this thing going and we're actually making progress the TW200 tire is a short tire but it's a fat tire and it takes a lot of air but we're making progress and coming up right about here you will see the first bead pop with that first bead pop now I'm just gonna add a thousand more pumps and get the second bead to pop but the pump is only registering about 20 pounds and with a lot of soap on the seams we should be able to get this thing to pop up and if you look on the right side of the rim on the top you'll see the second bead pop and once we have that we know we have this wheel mounted and ready for business so here we go 
look on that right side right there and you'll see the, the bead set and right boom right there the victory is mine we actually mounted a TW200 wheel in the garage with a bicycle pump and some straps and now we can get on with the next portion of this with the tire mounted now it's on to the good fun part that I'm really excited about remember that flat tire that I had last year there's that screw I kept this tire and I'm using this tire purposefully for this demonstration because what I am going to attempt to do is take this screw out of the tire and plug it and run it just if I can do this in a controlled environment of the garage and make it work then we're on I have my trail gear um, tire plug kit out of my Land Cruiser this is what I traditionally carry in my rig for a spare setup and this is a bit big but for the purpose of this situation it'll do the job I've already ordered uh, a motorcycle ATV style kit but again for the controlled environment of the studio garage situation we're going to use this kit right here get the screw out release the air Psh! George takes the reamer reams the, the hole out a little bit there and then inserting the plug tire strip pretty much the same way you would on a traditional ATV or 4x4 tire and you take it in and leave about a half inch out and then right here boom you pull it and the white stuff you see is the, the little sauce that was in the cup in the kit and that just helps it go in and yeah we just kind of cut it down even with the with the knobbies themselves so George like I said he worked with me here at Redline he's done a lot of four-wheel wheeling and you know also motoing so we kind of got this kind of covered and uh, yeah I'm uh, quite giddy right now because now I'm gonna take this old tire that we just plugged I don't hear any air leaking out I'll let it set overnight and really test it out but these plug kits actually work 4x4 guys have been using them for years and years and motorcycle guys have been using them but I don't think any of us T-dubbers have uh, used it and this this kit is a little bigger than what I want to carry on the moto so I will be getting a moto specific uh, plug kit these tire plug kits have been around since the 1930s and basically it uses these vulcanized rubber strips they're super tacky like super buttersnot and I only use that half a stick to, to plug this tire and again this is a full size you know 4x4 you know automotive tire kit that you use you know basically car tire truck tire and they have even larger ones for 18 wheelers and such as that so what I want to show you here is these are mountain bike tire strips George and I both ride mountain bikes but this is his tubeless tire kit for his mountain bike and most of your mountain bikes are picking up like small thorns and such this is the size that you use for a traditional mountain bike and It'll be interesting to see the ATV motorcycle kit that I'm getting from Rocky Mountain ATV, what size that'll be in comparison to these guys. And here's the kit that I'm getting, so that way you can see exactly what I'll be using going forward here. I went and purchased some ride-on tire protection system. It's tire balancer and sealant. This is what I've been using. I didn't have it in this last time because the shop that I had installed the tube didn't have this stuff. They had something else and it's sort of worked, sort of hasn't worked. But this time I went and got my favorite stiff. First you gotta remove the uh, valve core. on here this will be a 
pretty good precautionary measure but also as you can see I don't have any of those big ugly tire weights on the rim or on the spokes I've used this stuff before and it works great you don't have to balance the wheel this is the balance these guys right on they have a military contract for the big like super big 6x6 type trucks. Stuart Stevens 1083s. Takes a little bit getting all this stuff in there. I cut this tube myself. It's just a piece of tube, like a good piece of rubber tube. They can flex and be a little longer here. And see, so gonna be working with this bottle. The little tubes that they supply are really short and our short spokes doesn't allow us to get in there as easy so opted for a little bit bigger tube to get in there if this all works we will be in business i'm just trying to get every penny's worth out of this bottle i think these bottles were like 19 bucks a piece so it's not cheap and there's no sense of throwing product away i want all of it i'm putting two bottles in now but i think I think I may add a third. I gotta go back on the website and see what their recommendation is for this size tire. I have all this material in there. All right, I'm gonna call that bottle good. At Gustin Motorsport, we use this stuff quite a bit. That's where I learned about it from working there. We are going to give it as best shot as possible. Almost have it all in. This stuff is pretty thick, so you have to shake it down. I'm trying to get all my pennies worth out of it. All right, that one's pretty good. Okay, now we'll just remove our hose. And we transferred the material into the wheel with. Put the valve core back in. All right, valve core's back in. All right. Now we're going to uh, take the chain ring off. I envy the Erring Gwen garage setup. Oh, sprocket still looking pretty good. Teeth are pretty straight on the profile. None of them have thinned out. I mean, we're not talking a really big horsepower bike here. Getting to those nuts down there. Pretty short, 12. Sure enough, <laughs> as I went to go do my oil change and then went to downtown to uh, get the tire sealant, come home, and then, yep, get home, and then started to work on the bike in a little while and Yep, it's flat. The brake drum looks pretty decent. And this tire will get pulled off and get put in the spares and then maybe make a another tubeless backup.
done this route too many times, so each time I come, I'm still like just pretty uh, in awe right there. Pikes Peak.